Hello guys, welcome back to another Python tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you about the map function in Python. I'm going to show you how to use it by working on certain examples that apply the map function in Python. Hi, my name is Paul, Trevenny44 is a brand, and welcome to my channel. I create content relating to Python programming, general growth as a software engineer, machine learning, and more. Consider subscribing in order not to miss out. Now, let's get into the video. So, what is the map function? The map function is a built-in function that allows us to apply a function to every item in an iterable, be it a list, a string, a tuple, or anything that can be iterated upon, without looping over it ourselves. So we want to apply a certain function to every element inside an array, a list, a string, or anything of the sort, any data structure that can be iterated upon, but we don't want to use a, a loop to actually go over them. What we do is that we use the map function. Now, per the documentation, this is the signature of the map function. It takes in the function that you want to apply and an iterable or a number of them. So it could be a single iterable or multiple iterables. Now let's take our first example. Let's say I want to find the length of each word in this list of words over here. Apple, it, cat, dog, and the rest. I want to find the length of each of them in here. What I'm going to do is to use the map function. So I'm going to call the map function. I'm going to pass in the length function. The function that retains the length of each word that I pass to it as an argument. So I'm passing in the length function. I'm passing in the iterable, which in this case is my list of words. So as I run this code, length of words is going to be a new iterable containing the length of each of the words inside this word list that I've passed. However, when I print out the length of words, I get this statement saying it's a map object. Now, realize that we passed in a list of words to the map function, but the map function retains a new iterable, which is a map object. So what we do is that we cast the output of this particular um, map function, which is a map object. We cast it into a list so that we will be able to print it and look at it ourselves. Something like this. So Apple has five letters in there. It has two letters in there. Cat has two letters in there. And we get this. So what this map function allowed us to do was to find the length of apple, length of it, and so on and so forth. So it takes each element in this list of words and applies the length function here to each of the words in there. So as we have already seen, the map function returns a map object, which is also an iterator of the result. It doesn't return the same type as what was passed to it. In this case, I passed the list, but it didn't return me a list. It returned to me a map object, always going to be returning a map object. So when you are working with a map function, you should make sure that you cast the output of the map function into whichever um, type that you are working with so that everything will just fit into what you are doing. Now let's take another example. Let's say I want to square every number in a list of numbers. This is what I'm going to do. So I have my list of numbers here, numbers, and I have squared numbers over here, and I'm casting it, the output of this map function into a list. So this map function has to take in a function as the first argument and the iterable as the second argument. Now, this function I'm passing in here is what we call a lambda function, also known as anonymous function in Python. If you don't know about the lambda function, this statement that I've written over here essentially means that a function takes in an input x and returns x squared as the output. So this whole thing over here is essentially the same as me defining a function that takes in a parameter x and returns x squared. Now, I am going to pass this function and the iterable of numbers to the map function, and then this map function will return an object, a map object containing the squares of these numbers that I've passed. I'm going to cast that into a list, and I'm going to return that as squared numbers. So if I print out squared numbers here, I am going to get a square of each number in here. One squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, and so on and so forth. Now, looking back at the signature of the map function, we realize that the map function can also take multiple iterables as input. It is possible to pass multiple iterables to the map function. The function will be applied to the items from all the iterables in parallel. I'm going to explain that in a bit using an example. The iterator stops when the shortest iterable is exhausted. Now, I know this all seems to be text, but let's get an example and I'll explain it better. Example 3 says that we should add the elements in two lists of numbers in parallel. So adding two lists of numbers together. So let's say I have numbers 1 to be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and numbers 2 to be equal to 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. If I want to add these two numbers together, as in I want to add 1 to 6, 2 to 7, 3 to 8, 4 to 9, and 5 to 10, what I'm going to do is use the map function, create a function that takes two variables, 
x and y and returns the sum of those two variables and then pass in these two iterables as argument. So this is iterable number one, iterable number two, numbers one, numbers two. What the map function is going to do is that it's going to pass the first element of numbers one as x and its first element of numbers two as y. And then it's going to retain the sum of that and put that at its first position, at the first position of the map objects that will be retained. Then in the second iteration, it's going to take two, the second element in numbers, in numbers one as x, and then take seven, the second element in numbers two as y, and then retain the sum of that also. So it's going to be one plus six, two plus seven, and so on and so forth. It hasn't in parallel. So it takes the first element of numbers one, takes the first element of numbers two, if there were other iterables in there, it's take the first element of all of those and pass them to whichever function I have given over here. For example, let's say this lambda function I've written over here was to take only one argument like this. This code is going to crash because this function over here is expecting only one argument, but the math function is going to pass two arguments to it, be it the first element of numbers one and the first element of numbers two. Send the code back to how it was. If I run this and print sum of numbers, you realize that it returns what? 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. That is 1 plus 6, 7, 2 plus 7, 9, and so on and so forth. Let's move on to example number four, finding the power of some numbers. I want you guys to write in the comment section what you think this answer is going to be. Now I have numbers to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I have powers to be a tuple, a tuple, 2, 3, and 4. If I run this code, what would that be? So I get 1, 8, and 81. And that is 1 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3, 3 to the power 4. Now don't forget, we said that the iterator stops when the shortest iterable is exhausted. So it starts taking them in parallel. It takes 1 and it takes 2, it takes 2 and it takes 3, sends them to the power function over here. This is basically the power function in math. It takes in the first element as a number and then the second one as a power. Now it starts, starts getting the argument here in parallel, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, but then it stops because the shortest iterable is exhausted. And that's how come we got 1, 8, and 81. 1 squared, 2 cubed, 3 to the power 4. One important thing you should notice is that the iterables don't have to be of the same type. I used a list here as numbers, and I used a tuple here as the powers. Now here I have trial 1, something for you guys to go and try out. What is the output of the following code? So here I have a function, a test function, that takes 3 arguments, three arguments, A, B, and C, and basically returns the sum of those three things. Our test result here, which is basically taking the math function, which is basically the math function taking in that test function, and also two other it travels. What do you think is going to be the result of this? I'm going to run it, and then we see it out. Now when I run this, I get an error. It says that test function is missing one required positional argument, C. Now, this is why we are getting this error. This test function here, based on definition, is requiring three arguments, A, B, and C. But as the map function is executing, the map function is going to pass one and four as the values of A and B to this particular function, to this particular test function. But this test function requires a third argument, C, which will not be passed by this map function. And that is why we are getting this error right here. The, map, the test function is missing one required positional argument, C. This is another trial for you guys to, you know, try out and write the answer in the comment section. I have numbers one, numbers two, one being a list and one being a string. And I'm having concatenation over here to be the list of the map of a certain function. And this function basically is sort of like a concatenation. It takes X and Y and returns X plus Y. It takes numbers one and numbers two as the it travels. If I were to print out concatenation, what do you think I'll get? So here I have the answers to be what? 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 5, 5. And this is because a string is also an iterable. So as it is iterating the first time, it takes the first element of this 1, and it takes the first element of the string 1. The same second time, it takes the second element of this 2, and the second element of the string 2. One other trial for you. I am casting the output of this map function into a list. Now this map function takes in a function that takes in two arguments, x and y, and returns the summation or x plus y. Now, this takes in two iterables, this and this. So it takes in two iterables, the first iterable being 
a list of tuples. The second iterable being a list of tuples. What happens if I were to run this first? Let's try out and see. Now what? What went on here is that the first tuple is passed in as x. The first tuple of the second iterable is passed in as y. And the concatenation of that gives 1, 2, 7, 18. That is the first element of the, the object that is returned. The same thing that will happen for this and this would be concatenated. This and this will also be concatenated. Now what would happen if I were to remove the second h trouble here? What happens then? Now if I run this again, I get an error. It says that the lambda function is requiring a missing positional argument. Why? Now, even though this is a tuple, it doesn't spread the tuple into this function. It rather passes it as an argument on its own. So like a full argument, not as individual element. So the tuple, the function over here is still requiring two positional arguments, but it's getting only one. And that one is just this tuple as one thing. Now, as a final thing and homework for this video, I want you guys to go and find out what happens if you pass in a dictionary as the iterable to the map function. I might cover this in another video, but I want you guys to go and find out about it first. So guys, that's it for this video. That is how you use the map function in Python. It's a built-in function that could come in handy when you don't want to use any for loop or while loop to, you know, apply a certain function to the elements of an array or a list of, or any trouble that you could think of. That's it for this video. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy the video, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.